everyone, welcome to this new episode of Carolyn Talks. I am your host, Carolyn Hines, and this is the podcast where I, your host, Carolyn Hines, speak to film creators about their work, the industry, and what inspires them. And today, I am joined by director Toshido Saiga to speak about his new action drama, Red Shoes, which premiered at the 2022 Fantasia Film Festival. This was a great film, and it's about boxing, but it's also about motherhood, parenting, the challenges that women face raising children alone, poverty as well as hope and finding inspiration in your children this and i'm so happy to be able to talk to director saiga about this film and it's going to be a short interview because we only had a short time to speak during fantasia festival but i appreciate him for speaking to me as well as for his translator for providing his services and so i hope you enjoy this discussion thank you thank you mrs saiga for talking with me today about your film red shoes which premiered at the 2022 fantasia film festival um i really enjoyed this film my first question is this is your first time directing action film and it's about boxing what were the main challenges that you faced while filming this as well as what was the um something that you discovered as a director that you didn't really know about yourself before えっと、well, first, uh, when you film a, a movie with sports, you can't just uh, leave everybody to do as they please. Everything, every movement has to be decided in advance, and we have to plan every shot, every about three minutes shot, with uh, uh, where the cameras are and where we'll, where we'll be looking. And uh, so that, that's a, quite a challenge. So, two things. Two things are the cast. But, you know, it's a very and also, this is an ordinary movie. We uh, needed somebody who would be able to commit to uh, learning boxing, and uh, that was also uh, another major uh, challenge. で、ちょっとやってたんですよね。ところがやっぱりボクシングとキックボクシングって似てるようで全く違うもんで、それをまあより訂正するとか始めてる。まずバスレル。バスレてからボクシングを習い始めるみたいな。朝日なさん。And also uh Aya Asahina uh, had already practiced kickboxing, which is kind of similar to boxing, but it's not the same. Exactly. So she kind of had to forget about it and relearn it from the beginning. Mm. And she also kind of had to build it into her body, gain some muscles in the abs, around the arms, and she had to be able to show some speed and some skills in the punches so that she looked really like more like a pro. あと
ちょっと過呼吸いわゆる、えー、ちょっと、えー、撮影をストップするみたいなところも何回かあってそれをやっぱりこちらも今日、えー、つけながら、えー、撮影しました。And the, like I explained yesterday too,、uh, Asahi,、uh, Asahina san actually had a few moments during filming since it was, a very hard,、uh, it, it was very hard to record. She had a few times where she actually started hyperventilating. So we really had to、uh, watch out for her and be careful as we continued with the filming. えー、その相手役を最初プロの本当にボクサーをキャスティングしようかなと思っていたんですが、えー、実際にするとそのプロってやっぱりそのアンチ受けるを本当に破ってしまうので、えー、とそこも考えて役、えー、まずは役者さんで、えー、ボクシングがある程度できる可能性のある人もしくは今から特訓すれば、えー、ボクサーに見える方を、えー、一緒に探して。And we also needed to find for the,、uh, the character's final rival, at the,、uh, somebody who would be a pro boxer. And we thought about actually hire, hiring a pro boxer, but we found that perhaps it, they would be a little too strong、mm. uh, physically. So、uh, for that reason, we had to, it was difficult for us to try to find somebody who would、uh, be able to train and look like somebody, like a really, really tough boxer for her. Mm, okay, and then and with all of the challenges that you had as a director and then with your casting, something that, I, that really struck me with this film is that Minami, she is her, her life almost from the beginning straight to the end of the film is kind of like a boxing match. It's kind of like a fight because she, she keeps getting knocked down and she still has to keep getting back up. So, how did you go about balancing the tone of the film so that it wasn't like super depressing and there's still like glimmers of hope because like she struggles from the very beginning of this film to the end from a child to an adult? あのまあ、ボ,クシングボクシングの,あボクシングのような戦いをずっとやってたんですよね、リング以外でも。で、そのバランスを監督としてどうやって取ろうとしたんですかああ、なるほど。それどうでしょう<笑> well, that's, that's a tough one. <笑>あのまずボクシングがベースなんですけども、えー、この映画って日本柱があって、そのハートクの。えーストーリーと、それでボクシングとして、ボクサーとしてこう成長していく、その2つがあって、えー、それをやっぱりあの、えー、ボクシング全部だけで見せたこと、えー、そこの見え方がないから、その、何ていうんですかね、あのハートこの方がちょっと弱くなってしまうので、えー、そこはなんとかその、最後のラストランがボクシングと、えー、いわゆるハートこの、えー、ラブストーリーを、えーうまくミックスするように何回も台本を直して作りました。日本橋日本橋だったら、えー、1個じゃなくて2つ。中、中上。あ、日中上。あ、はいはい。Yeah, I really tried to,、uh, to, uh, to make it. While, while it's a, it is a movie about boxing,、uh, with, a, with boxing as its base,、uh, I really wanted to make it into a two way story between、uh, the, the story of the heart and the story of the boxing in her life. Which is,、uh, which is how I, how should I say? If it, if it had been only about boxing,、mm-hmm. uh, it would have been difficult to tell the story of her, of her heart, of her love. And,、uh, and likewise, uh, 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 the opposite. So、uh, that's, the, that's the balance I, I,、uh, I reached out for.、Hmm. Um, no, I understand what you're saying because、um, there's, the film doesn't have many. Set locations, but one of the main ones is、um, Minami and Emmy's home. And I noticed in her home, like the decorations are very are kind of separated into two things there's Emmy's stuff, like her crayons and her drawings, and then there's the workout、um, stuff for boxing. So there's like the bench and the weights and the posts of her dad. 
And I found that interesting where uh, that Minami is, that's, that's who she is as a person. That's her identity, a parent to Emmy and a boxer and a daughter to a former boxer. So talk, could you talk about, so how did you go about working with like the set directors just to create that uh, visual identity for Minami, the boxer and the mother? で、アパートの中はエミちゃんのものとえっと、マナミのあのベンチとかベルとかボクシングに関するものはあの本当に一緒に揃ってたんですね。で、そのその余分なことはないシンプルシンプルなえ部屋にしたくてだからその自分を自分を鍛えるためのえものとえまあの子供のエミのえ愛するエミのものとこの二つ以外は何もないというシンプルに設計をしました Well, my my aim was really to make it into a room where uh, there was no excess. No, it was a very simple apartment in which we could only see the, the. Uh, a, there was nothing. There was absolutely nothing but the training stuff and the kids' stuff, uh, living side by side and together in the apartment. I also wanted to show uh, how what the, the poor lifestyle that she was uh, that, that she was living. There was uh, absolutely nothing unnecessary, uh, especially compared to the, the mother, the stepmother's house. And uh, I wanted, uh, I, would, I really wanted it to look like a losing boxer's house in which uh, the refrigerator is filled with nothing but water. And you mentioned the, um, the mother-in-law, like we might be talked about about the mother-in-law. So that's another main theme for this film and it's the relationship between parents and their children. So um, I want you, could you t t tell me why um, her mother-in-law never even thought to help Minami raise Emmy? Instead, she wanted to take her away from Minami. And I was just thinking, um, why don't you just help her? Like you have the resources, help her. So could you explain that to me? Because I was so, I know it's a grief, but I was so like, help Minami. <laughs> で、母親と子供の愛についてもそのそのアスペクトもあるんですね。で、英語見て思ったのはあのこうそのお母さんあのあの死んだ旦那のお母さんがなぜあのマナミを助けようとせずにまああの後ろ子供をあのま自分のため
、えー、自分の自由にやってるキャラクターなんで、えー、そこでその、えー、彼女的にはその頭で納得してないっていう部分があって、えー、試合を見て初めて心で納得したみたいな設定ですかね。So, the,、uh, you see, the mother, I, I put the emphasis on the fact that the mother was also,、uh, also raised her own son as a single mom. So, she has her own pride. And it's not really that she never tries to help Manami in that way. There's also the fact that we show that Manami doesn't listen. She's、mm-hmm. somebody who does、uh, what she wants, the way she wants it. And、uh, we also see that she,、uh, they, they, can't, they can't really agree on each other. And there's the fact that the mom is somebody who, well, as a single mom herself, she experienced、uh, a lot of loneliness. And that's also、uh, something that we see in Manami and in Emi. When Emi t- gets taken away, she's lonely. When Manami has her,、uh, her daughter taken away, she's lonely. And、uh, the mother had only one son for herself, which he, and he passed away. And she could not accept that he wanted to get married to a boxer. She,、uh, she was against it, and yet he did. So that, that's, that's also the whole,、uh, the, whole, uh, the, the, the whole thing that I wanted to show. Well, you,、uh, as you know, human beings are complex, really, and I wanted to show them in、uh, the most. Uh, the, the, Uh, in the deepest way possible.、Mm. They're very complex, and Minami is very stubborn. And it helps and it works for her as a boxer, but as、uh, I think as a mother, as you said, like she doesn't listen to other people. So that did create a lot of obstacles for her in her life. So、um, working with Aya、um, and, the ca- and developing the character, was there anything that she shared about her, how she saw Minami as a mother versus a boxer? マナミは確かにあのあの自分勝手ですねあの。マイペースで動く人で、ボクサーとしての生活はあのまあまあ言っているかもしれませんけど、母親としては生活が,あのがダメなんですね。で、で周りの人が、まあ、あいろんな方法でマナミの人生の中で苦しさを入れちゃうんですよね。で、朝日奈,朝日奈さんとそのキャラクターを。あの一緒に作ったときは、朝日奈さんは何かそ,のそれに関する感想とか意見あのをあのあら表したことはあるんですかああ、えー、っとですね、えー、っと1年間あの準備期間があったので、えー、っと彼女は彼女なんですかね、自分の学び像と、えーこえー、私の方の学び像とはちょっとずつ、えー、離れたり。したこともありますで結局は、えっと、私が作りたかったのは、えー、不器用で、えー、そのボクシングしかできない彼女ですけど、えー、子供を本当に愛しているという学びとを作りたくて、他のものは、えー、なんか器用にできない。ところが、まあえー、実際の,、まあ、あの朝比奈さんは日常生活で言うと結構、えー、戻るとね。モデル、女優とか、まあ、使い分けてやってる器用な人なんでしょうけど、えー、その辺も、まあ、あのちょっと溝が少しあって、それを埋める作業をやってました。Well, it indeed happened a,、uh, it happened a few times indeed that、uh, me and Aya had、uh, each our way of seeing、uh, the character of Manami. And at times, at times we saw it the same way, at times it was,、uh, there was quite the gap. Uh, for example,、uh, Aya sometimes、uh, saw it more from the lens of,、uh, of, a, of a mother who,、uh, who was a、uh, Manami、uh, Manami uh, Manami uh, Manami なかなかうまくできない、えー、というのが私のプランで、朝比奈さんはあの、えー、どっちかというとその、まあえー、それは分かっていながら、やっぱりでも、えー、とやっぱり器用に、えー、ちょっと振る舞う学び像をちょっと考えていたので、少しそこ,こに、えー、溝があった。器用に
器用に、えー、彼女自身がもう少しなんていうんですかねあの普通の人間っぽく彼女がちょっと、えー、自分の等身大とかですあ、はい、実際の学びあの朝日奈イコール学びの方に自分の方に近いキャラクターを考えていたんだけど、えー、私はどっちかというとこの,この映画のストーリーと、えー、すごく不器用で、えー、子供だけボクシングで子供だけはすごく愛してるみたいなそういう縮図を作りたかったのでちょっとそこに、えー、ああの溝というか皮があってそれをちょっと埋める作業はかかりました。So, the way that、uh, Aya saw it was more、uh, a, little, a, a bit more of a reflection of herself, while what I was planning for Manami was more of a character of a boxer that, was,、uh, that is、um, a bit cowardly and,、mm. uh, and yet、uh, very loving of her, of her daughter.、Uh, and all the things that we have in common, we had to build on them、uh, until we, we reach a quite,、uh, until we saw Manami in a, a similar way. So,、um, so, for my last question, the way how the film ends is interesting because it's, I, I saw it as more as Minami getting validation、uh, of being both a mother and a boxer from Emmy. And that's the most important thing for her. She was struggling to fit this idea and to pay homage to her father. But at the end, she realized that the only person she really has to. Respect is Emmy, and that's the only validation she needs. So, at the end, does she continue boxing or does she realize that she doesn't have to prove anything more? Does she go and do something else? <laughs> 必要なものはあの他人にあの認めることだけだったんですよね。うんうん、で、結局一番最終,最終的にはあの認,めあの認めてもらわなきゃいけない人はやっぱり一人だけですね、それはイミちゃん。で、その戦い,その戦いであのそういうレッスンを受けたんですね。私がそれはとても面白いと思いました。えー、っとちょっとワンですごめんなさい。えー、っと、マナミ。うん、認めるっていうことが、えー、大切だっていうのは最終的にその、えー、義理のお母さんと学びの、えー、それから、えー、エミも含めて、えー、とでエミもいい環境じゃなくて、えー、お母さんと貧しくてもやっぱり一緒にいたい、えー、いうことを受け入れるお互いにいろんなことをその受け入れることがやっぱり人間関係でやっぱり必要かなっていうのは、えー、この作品でも。I, I showed that、uh, it's important for human beings to, to validate each other, really, to support each other. But、uh, there was also、uh, the point of view of the,、uh, the stepmother who、uh, needed to acknowledge and accept the fact that even though she is poor,、uh, she is,、uh, Manami is Emi's mother, and, that's, and Emi wants her mother and nobody else. And so. I, uh, she, uh, so, so, yes, she needed to accept that、uh, even though she was poor, she, she is、uh, the one that's the mother. And that's a, that's a, a theme that I,、uh, I think、uh, I tried my best to show in, in my movie. を一歩も出なかったんですよね。それがやっぱりその、えー、一歩出ることによって愛と認められる、その価値観を認められるという,うことを、えー、こうしたらできるというのを、えー、それぞれが理解した。こうしたらできるのあの、えー、とそれぞれの,あの位置から動かなかった。はい、自分の考えが出なかった,出なかったところが、だから、最後にそれぞれ一歩ずつ学びを学びでそのエミがいなくなったことによって
、えー、もっと何が大切かと分かったしそれぞれが、えー、今までのとこから一歩意味も意味で、えー、お母さんとやっぱりどうしても暮らしたいっていうそれぞれが義理の母も、えー、彼女の頑張りを決めるという一歩、えー、全身、えー、踏み出した一歩前に出したことによって、えー、その何かが最後に見えた。And、uh, Manami had also had to struggle with、uh, getting out of、uh, the place that she was the, in a, a sort of her comfort zone. In order to be accepted by people around her, she had to step one,、uh, a little bit at a time, out of the way she was thinking, out of her own behavior. And, uh, uh, and it's、uh, when Amy was taken from her that she really had to focus on herself and,、uh, and do just that. And、uh, Emmy was being just Emmy, and she wanted to live with nobody else but her mom. And、uh, that's what it took for the stepmother to acknowledge Manami as the, mo- as the mom. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So, everyone, that was another episode of Caroline Talks. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. And again, thank you so much for. Director s a i k o for speaking to me and again to his translator for working with us today. I, it was a great discussion. I appreciate the time taken to speak to me. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. You can find other episodes of Caroline Talks on the babaydopodcast.com as well as on ACAST, Google Podcasts, and other platforms. And other Google, sorry, and other podcast streaming platforms. You can find video formats of Caroline Talks on my YouTube channel. And that's under my name, Carolyn Hines, H I N D S, where I speak to other film creatives from different festivals, including TIFF, the Tribeca Film Festival, and other, epi- other previous、um, seasons of Fantasia Festival. You can also find my interviews for the African American Film Critics Association Virtual Roundtable, where we speak to black creatives in the film and television industry as well. And also my Asian drama podcast, again, slash YouTube channel, Beyond the Romance, where I speak about、um, my current watches and as well have other. And have guests join me as well to speak about their favorite dramas. My most recent episode was about this is, that's okay, this is, that's okay, this is, what's, what am I saying? It's okay, <laughs> that's love,、um, is one of my favorite dramas. It's about, it talks about mental health and、um, trauma and the scars, and as well as healing. And we did that for the KPSM Podcast Fest 2022, which we raised funds for.、Um, Mental health awareness in minority communities. It was a great、um, experience. I had a blast. You can also find my、um, live tweets for dramas using the hashtag dramas with Carrie. And also, I am also the host of Saturday Night Sci Fi, where I and my co host and our peeps get together every Saturday night at 10 p.m. to live tweet、um, a sci fi themed show or film from around the world. and I'm wrapping up now. You can also listen to my other podcast, So Here's What Happened, which I am my friend, Lanisha Camel, host, where we talk about all things nerdy from a black female perspective. that You can find that on ACAST as well as on the b a b o y d o p o d c a s t c o m And my R3 page is linked in my Twitter bio, where you can read all of my published work.、Um, my Twitter and my Instagram handles are at Carrie CNH12. That's it, R R I E CNH12. And until the next episode of Carolyn Talks, thank you so much. Bye. Ooh.